Hey everyone, Steve here and in this video I'm checking out this old school Devastator arcade stick made by Quickshot for the original Sony PlayStation. Now this isn't usually the sort of thing I would pick up off eBay because from the looks of it, it doesn't look that amazing. You can kind of imagine that it's probably a cheap, probably membrane based arcade stick. But the fact that it is for the original PlayStation, which is an iconic console, and this is the original like shrink wrapping for it, was basically just an opportunity that I couldn't afford to pass up. So I grabbed it and to my surprise, it is a much smaller controller than I imagined. As you can see here, this is the entire box for the arcade stick itself. And for comparison, here is a DualShock 4. So the box for this arcade stick isn't that much bigger than a DualShock 4. But anyways, as always, let's take a quick look around the box. On the front, we have a picture of the arcade stick. Apparently comes with a three year warranty from sometime in the 90s. Independent turbo fire buttons, which is cool. If you're looking for the model number, it is QS-1186. On the bottom here, we can see that it's from Quickshot Limited in Kowloon Bay, Hong Kong. On the back, the features of the arcade stick are pretty self-explanatory. Quickshot is a company that is probably not around anymore, but definitely in the 90s and probably late 80s had a lot of peripherals out in the market. This is a bunch of key characteristic in French, and this is probably that in English. So let's just go through these. Arcade type design, sure. This is interesting, a rotatable button pad, so that's pretty cool. Start and select, normal. Fire buttons, normal. Eight directions, okay. Turbo buttons, eight foot cord, so that's about uh, two meters-ish. And five stabilizing suction cups down the bottom. Okay, so I think these are the last few moments that this thing remains shrink wrapped, so let's open it up. So I've broken the seal on this thing. There's only one tab at the top to open up. There we are, and let's have a look together. Cool, bring it out. Ah, there we are, nothing else in the box. And then one more plastic bag. Okay, so right off the bat, this thing is insanely light. Probably weighs like 200 grams or something. And let's have a button and stick test. Huh. First off, this ball top spins like indefinitely. Check this out, woo! So it probably uses membrane contacts. And then these buttons are nice and mushy. No micro switches to be found on anywhere. So taking a close look up, we've got our main buttons here. R1, R2, L1, L2. Select, start, and then turbo functionality for the main four buttons. Nice cable. And on the bottom, we just have embossed. Quick shot, model number QS-1186, made in China. So I'm just gonna give this one quick test on the PS2, given that it has the same plug. And then we can take a look inside this thing. And here we are, it might be hard to see, but I've got my PS2 over here. I've got the arcade stick plugged in right here. And to celebrate the announcement of that new Tekken Bloodline anime, I've loaded up some Tekken 4. But also because given the fact that these four buttons are so prominent and any six button fighting game would probably be a little hard to play with a small R1 and R2 here, then I think either Tekken or Soul Calibur would be the best bet given that there are only four button games. Also any Neo Geo games. So let's just get into arcade mode here. I could never really play Tekken competitively as a kid because there just wasn't anyone around where I grew up and also I was like 10. But anyways, let's go with Kazuya or Kazuya. Don't really know any combos or anything, but I do have like a fundamental knowledge of inputs. Whoa. What the? So right off the bat, you know, the arcade stick doesn't feel great. This stick has basically like no feedback in terms of giving directional inputs, but you know, that's just because it's membrane in nature. You can kind of even see under it, like, what is that? It's just like a, like a kneecap with no fluid or anything like that. It feels kind of gross. Can't really test all the buttons again because it's Tekken, but it doesn't really matter. And these four main buttons work great, relatively speaking. I was basically just doing one, one, two the whole time. So square, square, triangle. Let's do two more matches. Let's see what um, electric fist is, or whatever it's called. Lightning uppercut. Is that what I want? Ah, cool. Oh, Jesus. Get him. Oh, so close. How do I do electric wind god fist? Let me Google it. So electric wind god fist is forward, neutral, down, down, forward, two. That seems pretty hard. Hmm, does that count? Probably not. Whatever, I'm gonna give up on that. Nice. Man, this thing feels so cheap. And honestly, off eBay was relatively cheap as well, so there are probably a lot of these floating around. 
Oh, did it. Let's do electrics. Oh, geez. Haha, <laughs> I got it. I want to do one more electric. Yes, got it. And then I didn't follow up with anything. So I think that's going to be it for this really quick play test of the Quick Shot Devastator for the PlayStation. Now let's have a quick look inside. Oh wait, actually, let's have a tour of the arcade stick itself. I forgot to rotate this disc. Ah, look at that. It's a little disc that all the buttons move around on. For 270 degrees of freedom, I don't know why you would want to play it like this, but I guess you could if you wanted to. And do all the buttons work the same? Ah. Okay, this is so bad. How do I even do it? Okay, wait. Oh, almost did it. Oh, come on, she keeps dodging it. Anyways, I dropped around. Basically, there are these markings here, which I guess are just meant to help you remember what setting you like the rotation on. And it's a little bit hard to get sometimes, but you just have to use the grips on the sides here. Grabbing it by the bumps on the L1 and R1 side are pretty useful. Just kind of do that. But yeah, by default, that's weird, that's not by default, is it? Was that how it was? No. Something like that. This thing is lining up with the bottom. Is the default setting. It's also definitely just got a weird shape in general. There's like a little palm rest here. Uh, this is like oblong for no reason. This is like the only 90 degree angle here on the bottom left. Uh, but yeah, let's just have a quick look inside, I guess. All right, I'm not gonna bother with anything fancy in terms of trying to protect the bolt up or anything. The bolt up kind of looks like a honey stirrer if any of you know what that looks like, you know, from like Winnie the Pooh. But anyways, on the bottom, there seem to be one, two, three, four screws. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a screw hidden under this foot or any of these other suction cups, but we'll have a look at that when we get to it. And I've just got a Phillips head. Okay, so I've got uh, these four screws that I can see out, but then I realize there's one here. I actually only saw this from the side as I was like unscrewing the other ones. So, oh, there's another one there. Any more tricky ones? Oh my God, there's one here too. Please not there. And there's not one there. So there's three more screws, great. So a total of seven screws, which is kind of a lot. Okay, so now I've got a total of seven screws out of the base, and I think that's gonna be it. And there we have it. <laughs> that's the entire assembly. Okay, let's first have a look at here. There seems to be four screw posts here for no reason, down on the bottom. And then we've got the little suction cups here. They probably are supported or mate with something else here, who knows. The Devastator internals itself, so here's the main PCB. Here is the connector for the cable, for the PlayStation cable. I don't know what JW means, probably means like jumper wire or something. Here is this connector for the arcade stick, which is, oh, actually no, that's the connector for everything, right? How many pins is that? L1, L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and ground. That's all labeled there, but I don't know what F circle, F cross, F square, and R triangle mean. I mean, I could kind of go really in depth and disassemble everything here, but I kind of don't feel like doing it. Let's see how this thing rotates internally. So I'm rotating the button mechanism or whatever you want to call it. And basically, as long as it doesn't pinch any of the wires, of course it's free to rotate. And that's the maximum rotation downwards. And here's the maximum rotation the other way. Can I rotate it from inside? No, it's kind of hard. I mean, I guess while I'm here, I can just disassemble it down to all its parts and then we can just have a look just for fun, eh? Okay, so first I'm gonna disconnect this cable from the main PCB. Let's just try and wiggle this out. Actually, maybe if I just unmount it, I can put more force on it because it's kind of hard to fit my fingers under it to get enough pressure on it. I thought this was gonna be a washer, which would make all of these screws really hard to like keep track of, but no, they're just attached to the screw, which is good. Okay, so the PCB is free and that buttons inside have actually already started to fall away. And there we are, you know, membranes for everything. So this is the joystick and it's literally just using these plastic thingies to press on these buttons, which isn't great. I'll figure out how to, well, there is a spring that's kind of like retaining it all. Interesting. So what else is there? Now I have to unscrew the joystick uh, or the buttons assembly. Okay, so I've just unscrewed this black disc thingy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that goes away. This whole thing just pops out like that. Uh, okay, I don't know what to do now. It's kind of disassembled. It's just all falling apart. Just a bunch of components. You can definitely put it back together. That's not going to be the hard part. Ugh, it's kind of greasy. This is one of these turbo sliders. How does that work? So this here is the last screw that's held in in this like entire arcade stick. So let's just get rid of it. Can't stop now. Nice little stubby screw. And there we are, that's it. 
six buttons and if I just do this they're all gonna fall out and there we are let's see if I can get a better grip on this now I really don't know how you meant to get this long cable out I might not bother this is the uh, button assembly I'm just gonna get a shot of this cable along with this marking just so I can man the traces later Feel free to screenshot all of this for reference if you'd like. Okay, so I'm definitely giving up on removing this cable. It seems pretty stuck on there. But I just wanted to have a look under these contacts. And there we can see the actual two traces that you know have to make contact with the carbon when you press this button. I think all of these actually, or at least a lot of them, have separate grounds. So that's what's happening here. I think these four have separate grounds. So that's, you know, like X, square, triangle, and circle, and then R1, R2, L1, L2 uh, all have different grounds. You can actually kind of see here that they've marked it. You can see R1 there, triangle, square, uh, X down here, circle there. So yeah, pretty cool. So I can definitely reuse this uh, if I ever really wanted to, like as part of a pad hack or something like that. Actually might have a good use for this very soon. That's probably gonna do it for the look at the Devastator Deluxe Joystick for the Sony PlayStation made by QuickShot. You can just look down the bottom here that this came out in 1996. Uh, pretty typical of the time of these cheap peripherals, relatively speaking. I'm not sure what the original retail price was. But yeah, if you ever wanted to know about this, there we are. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll answer as much as I can. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel as there's a lot to see. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.